Welcome to our next and final chapter in our environmental chemistry course. We are looking at chapter 9 called The World of Polymers and Plastics. The opening picture shows a picture of a, a spider web. That spider web is the same idea as the very front cover of our text, Chemistry in Context. What's with all the spider webs? And the word context derives from the Latin word meaning to weave. The spider webs exemplify the complex connections woven in each chapter between chemistry and the society we live in. However, in this chapter, the spider web takes one step further because it provides us with an example of what we call a natural polymer. To a spider, the polymer has many useful properties, including strength, the ability to stretch, and enough stickiness to ensnare prey. Anyone who has accidentally walked into a spider web can sure attest to those properties. So what is it about the spider web and how does it connect to the world of plastics? And the world of polymers will rely on the idea of monomers creating long chains called polymers. These polymers, if they are synthetic or man-made, are known as plastics. The spider web, since it is made of a natural polymer have a different set of properties that chemists have long been uh, striving to try to replicate. See the spider here is very good at recycling and creating new spider webs through the ingestion and then output of the new synthetic fiber. So we're really studying spider webs in the world of polymer science. How many plastics and polymers have revolutionized materials? I'm sure for anything that you can think of in ordinary life, you can consider how plastic has impacted. Consider the field of sports. Sports such as football, tennis, hockey, cycling, soccer, you name it, and plastics have revolutionized that particular sport. Football with the idea of the artificial turf, although artificial turf has been um, changed or morphed through the years from recycled rubber tires to an actual plastic grass. Plastic helmets and pads have uh, kept our players safer and safer through the years. Here at USM we have a polymer science field that is working very hard to make an even stronger helmet by polymer research. In the field of tennis, think about the old days of wooden tennis rackets compared to the carbon fiber of polymers that they use now, a much stronger, lighter tennis racket. You name it, you can think of the cycling, how the bikes have gotten stronger and yet lighter. All by making this synthetic compound known as plastic. They're stronger, lighter, and more flexible materials. When we think about plastic, some of the words that you might consider, maybe you've heard of before, such as rayon, nylon, lycra, polyurethane, teflon, styrofoam, and saran. All of these are either synthetic name brands or actual monomers that build up plastics. Perhaps you've even seen some of these types of symbols on plastic products for recycling. Low-density polyethylene will have a four, and thinking about what those three arrows mean, to recycle the products and consumers. Recycle products from consumers, and that loop should continue as best we can. Some high-density poly polyethylene. What makes saran wrap stretchy? What makes this soda bottle a good container for storage, shipping, and prevention of damage to the actual product. All of these considerations when we want to make a specific type of plastic. Are we looking to insulate such as styrofoam? Are we looking to stretch and put some saran wrap over our, our uh, dish to keep it, the food fresh? Teflon, is it in the bottom of our cooking pan to prevent things from sticking? And so forth. Each one of these types of plastics have very unique properties and yet so many similarities in the way that they're built. Do you recognize the names that we have just said? Like polyester, polypropylene, and polystyrene? And sometimes you hear these by trade names such as Gore-Tex, 
Kevlar or styrofoam. Even in epoxides and acrylics lie polymer science. Let's begin considering what plastics and polymers are made of. We have two very important key terms to begin. We have the term monomer, large molecules made up of long chains of atoms all covalently bonded together. A polymer, hear that prefix poly, meaning many. They are built from something known as a monomer, and if you know it, the prefix mono means one. One repeating unit over and over and over again to create a longer chain known as a polymer. A, mon a monomer, think of it as a single link in a repeating chain known as a polymer. To understand the chemistry would say we need to be able to open the chain to create a linkage and then close the chain back up to keep building the polymer into these thousands and thousands long of monomers. Monomers are the basic building blocks of polymers. Let's just consider those two definitions and consider it from a homework question. We're asked to choose the best definition for the term monomer. We've just seen it on the previous slide. Let's review. Monomer, the small molecules used to synthesize the polymer chain, like a strand of paper clips. Do you see a best definition for the term monomer? Let me give you a moment to read through the choices. A large molecule made of repeating subunits. A repeating subunit used to make a polymer. A molecule with a very high molecular weight. A single chain polymer. When I first read through these myself, I was going back and forth between choice one and choice two. But I realized that the large molecule is actually defined as the polymer and that the polymer are built of these repeating subunits known as monomers. So I'm with you. We selected correctly in this choice number two. How about the term polymer? Again, let's back the slide to repeat because repetition's our friend while we're learning, isn't it? Polymers are large molecules made up of long chains of atoms covalently bonded together. A long chain of repeating monomers. Let's work together to find that definition from our sapling question. Molecules with high molecular weights. Large molecules made of repeating subunits. Large molecules made of different elements. And a repeating subunit we use to make a monomer. Well, this monomer, the repeating subunit, is the monomer, so this makes no sense. But I do like a large molecule built of these subunits known as monomers. Monomers build polymers. Good work. So polymers have been with us since the beginning of time. We talked about these natural monomers from spiders. Natural polymers include things as cellulose, the major constituent of paper coming from trees, starch, tar and shellac, even tortoise shells and horns are made of monomers repeating themselves to long-chained polymers. Tree sap that produce amber and even latex are all examples of natural polymers. So polymers were processed with high heat and pressure into useful articles like hair ornaments and jewelry even back in the 1800s. So we've understood polymers have increasingly you know, desirable properties such as strength and the ability to mold and form them into ideal used materials. Natural polymers began chemically modified about in the 1800s to produce many more useful materials such as vulcanized rubber, cotton, and celluloid. The first semi-synthetic polymer was Bakelite back in 1909 and was soon followed by synthetic fibers such as rayon developed in 1911. So they have been around a long, long time. Why the tree trunk? Again, to remind us that its major constituent is also a polymer called cellulose. 
So if letter A shows a monomer, a repeating pattern can form as linking those monomers together to create a polymer. Now this polymer may be built of the same monomers repeating over and over and over, or you might see two different monomers forming a linkage to create a polymer, and that is an also a very predictable pattern. In this chapter, we will take a look at how both happen. In a process called addition polymerization, we take the same monomer and repeat it by adding on one monomer at a time down the course of the chain. In a second process we will look at a little further down in our chapter is called condensation polymerization. What do you think of when you hear the word condensation? Perhaps you think of water? And we'll see how water is actually split out as a byproduct. But to find a condensation pattern, we take one monomer, connect it to a different monomer, and repeat the pattern as we go down the chain. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow represent those different monomers creating this linkage. Polymers are referred to as macromolecules, macro meaning very large, because they involve thousands and thousands of atoms and their molar masses can reach over a million grams per mole. Many common classes of polymers are composed of hydrocarbons. Again, thinking about the petroleum, oil-based industry, we know that many plastics start from crude oil in hydrocarbon chemistry. Carbon makes up the backbone of the molecule and hydrogens are attached to those carbons to satisfy that octet rule. Here we see a diagram of something known as polyethylene, the simplest polymer structure. We have a carbon attached to a second carbon. Both of the carbons are filled with the octet with two more hydrogens. The next monomer, carbon to carbon, and each one has a hydrogen there to fill its octet. Other examples of polymers that contain carbon and hydrogen include polypropylene, polybutylene, and polystyrene. Poly means many. Prop, three carbons. Butyl has four carbons and the styrene, we'll see, has an aromatic ring known as benzene. All of these are simply suggesting that hydrocarbon chemistry is involved and that crude oil is the source where we find these hydrocarbon chains. In the first of two ways we will consider how polymers form, we'll focus on the process called addition. In addition polymerization, monomers add together to grow the polymer chain in such a way that the product contains all of the atoms from the starting material. There are no atoms that are eliminated. That's going to be different in a condensation reaction. In an addition polymerization reaction, we add the monomers together but do not eliminate anything along the way. Here we have a monomer called ethylene. Ethylene is C2H4 for its molecular formula. The carbons are bonded together by a double bond. It's very important that we recognize that that is a critical component of a monomer in the addition polymerization. The monomer must contain a double bond between the two carbons. We know that carbon must have four bonds total, so the other two remaining bonds are to hydrogens. Carbon to carbon double bond with two hydrogens off of each of those carbon is a molecule known as ethylene, a very important monomer for many different types of polymers. When I add the monomers together, it is known as an addition product. Notice if we take two carbon to carbon double bonds and we add them together, we have created a linkage 
where here is the first monomer, and here would be the second monomer. Here's carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 1, carbon 2, and we would simply keep repeating the chain over and over each time we add another monomer and to create a polymer, an addition reaction. So what have we noticed about the chemistry? The monomer contained this double bond. This double bond, think of it as a shared pair of electrons. The shared pair of electrons in this reaction unpair, they unpair and form something called a radical. A radical is a species or a, a, a molecule here known as a radical has an unpaired electron. Highly, highly reactive when they have an unpaired electron. This double bond has to have an activation, and we'll see this in the next slide or two, that this has to be initiated. It doesn't happen on its own, but through the use of a catalyst and an attacking molecule by another radical, this polymerization reaction begins by unpartnering the electrons in this shared pair. And all we're really saying is the original double bond, when it unpartners, creates the linkage between the two monomers. This used to be a double bond. One electron went this way, one electron went this way, and it's now the site of the linkage to the next monomer. This used to be a double bond. One electron went this way, one electron went this way, and now I see where the bond formed. The bond form from the electron coming from one monomer and the electron coming from the second monomer, when they form a bond, we've created a linkage between the two monomers. Notice nothing was eliminated, but the electrons that form a new bond in a linkage originally came from the double bond in the monomer. As additional ethylene molecules join, the chain just continues to grow and grow and grow. The only difference in the vast majority of monomers, known in the big six that we'll look at, the big six plastics in the industry, is one, one and only one grouping that's attached to the carbon in the ethylene molecule. Ethylene has a hydrogen here, and notice that if I have a repeating pattern where all of them just remain hydrogen, I have a monomer called ethylene. But let's suppose instead of an H, I substitute in a chlorine. Wherever this chlorine would appear, it would keep appearing all the way down the chain in the same position, but now we're starting to build something known as polyvinyl chloride, PVC by changing out just one of the four hydrogens into something else, we start to create different types of plastics. Suppose I put another methyl group there, instead of an, a CH3, or I'm sorry, instead of a chlorine, or instead of a hydrogen, I put on a methyl group. I start to create something known as polypropylene, and so forth. So this is a very critical bonding position to determine the properties and characteristics of the plastics that we build. So that overall process can be represented in the following manner. I have a monomer that contains a double bond. Very critical that the monomer has the double bond because the double bond serves as the source of electrons that act as the linkage site as we build polymers. The double bond has the electron from either carbon form a radical. And that radical electron is an odd number, an unpartnered electron. But in the formation, when it runs across another monomer, and that's what the polymerization reaction does, it says, well, I'll unpartner, I'll unpartner. And again, through an initiation process, and here we see the linkage form between one monomer and the next. So however many monomers we have colliding in a polymerization reaction, we end up with a chain that same number of units long. And like I said, whenever we change out that fourth 
position. So I have one, two, three, four positions in this original ethylene molecule. Whatever I place on one of these carbons, for instance, if it's a chlorine, I create a new monomer that builds a, a plastic known as polyvinyl chloride, PVC, and so forth. This example, I wrote down a note to remind myself, asks a question similar to this in your sapling. So let's take a look at what this might appear as in a sapling question. Which of the following structural features would enable an organic molecule to serve as a monomer in an addition reaction? Now I want to remind us there's going to be two different types of polymerization reaction. We're talking specifically about addition but in a while, in the next lesson, we'll introduce a second pattern called condensation. This question specifically asks about the addition polymerization feature. And I've been suggesting it must contain a carbon to carbon double bond in order to be considered for an addition polymerization reaction. The reason it must contain the double bond, that bond is the source of the electron that serves as the linkage electron when one monomer attaches to the next. When this carbon to carbon double bond forms a radical, one electron from the double bond goes in either direction. Notice it still leaves the carbons attached. One bond is still remaining. But now we have a source of an electron to keep repeating the polymerization process. Any species that has an odd number of electrons, an unpartnered electrons, is known as a radical. The radicals are very, very highly reactive. They would rather be partnered than unpartnered. So therefore, when a radical initiates this reaction and the double bond forms a new radical, this is the site of attachment. This also is ready to accept another electron from another radical. And you can see the process just keeps repeating itself. This electron unpartners and that serves as a site of a linkage. This electron goes the other direction and it's waiting for the process to keep repeating itself as the chain begins to grow and grow. It's known as a free radical process. It must be initiated by a catalyst, which is another free radical seeking an electron for stability. The addition polymer that has the formula shown below is used in surgical sutures dishwashers save food containers, thermal underwear, and many, many other products. Notice here we have a carbon-carbon single bond. One, two, three of these are hydrogens, and the fourth is a methyl group. A methyl is just one carbon, so it's, it's uh, named as a methyl group. What was the original monomer and showing all the hydrogen atoms? If this is the product after polymerization, what must have been the original monomer? And remember, monomers must contain double bonds. So this electron is simply coming back in. This electron is simply coming back in. And what we ended, or what we started with, was the double bond where three of the four bonds were from hydrogen and that fourth bond came from the methyl group, CH3. This is the original monomer that when it undergoes the addition polymerization reaction forms this in repeating patterns over and over. Let me erase that so we can get that clean. The original monomer contains the double bond as it forms the chain initiation reaction and, and the monomers begin to just grow and grow and grow in length, creating a polymerization chain. It forms the single bond between the two carbons. 
PVC is the third most widely produced plastic in the world. In the space below, draw the three repeating unit portion of a polymer chain of PVC, polyvinyl chloride. So I'm reminding us that PVC, polyvinyl chloride, had a monomer in which three of the attached segments here on the carbons were hydrogens, but the fourth one was chlorine. This is the monomer of PVC. So we have the first carbon would have the two hydrogens on it. The next carbon would have a hydrogen and then a chlorine. PVC monomer. The monomer contains the double bond and remember we're putting them in a linkage. The linkages come from undoubling that bond. We have hydrogen, hydrogen. Hydrogen, chlorine. There's the second monomer. We were asked to draw three. There's the third monomer where we have hydrogen, hydrogen and then hydrogen chlorine. What I am not going to draw is the free floating electron at the end. It's not asking me to do that. But I know it's there. A polymerization reaction relies on the radical. I know that it's there, but do not draw in an odd number of electron or sapling won't take it. So we have an odd number here. We have HCl, but no fourth electron domain. We have HH but no fourth electron domain. So we've repeated the pattern one, two, three times creating polyvinyl alcohol, I'm sorry, polyvinyl chloride from the monomer here. And I just put a screenshot in of what we just drew. We had one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a row. Remember that carbon one, two is a repeating pattern. So we drew in a total of six carbons. On every carbon one contained two hydrogens, but on every carbon labeled two, we had a hydrogen and chlorine, polyvinyl chloride. Polypropylene, abbreviated PP, polypropylene is used in plastic. In the space below, draw three repeating unit portion of the polymer polypropylene. And again, our text shows us the monomer of polypropylene. So let's just remind ourselves the monomer contains the double bond. Whoops, that's not very neat. And in the fourth position for polypropylene, we had that methyl group we discussed just a moment ago. So the monomer, three of the four positions are hydrogens, and the fourth position is a methyl group. Same idea as just the last one we drew, we want to draw three repeating structures. So we'll place carbon one, carbon two. At carbon one, I know there's two hydrogens. And at carbon two, I know there's a hydrogen and a methyl. Carbon one, carbon two two hydrogens, a hydrogen and a methyl. And one more, carbon one, carbon two, the hydrogen, hydrogen on carbon one, hydrogen methyl on carbon two. Very simplistic. Key points here of addition polymerization, the monomer must contain a double bond because each electron serves as the linkage site to connect the two monomers to make a longer chain polymer. Carbon one always contains the same substituents, in this case both hydrogens on both ends, and then carbon twos contain the hydrogen with the methyl group in polypropylene. And here I just took a screenshot of how this one ended up being drawn. Now these carbons can all be in the same plane, just as I had drawn a moment ago. But carbon ones all had HH. Carbon twos all contained HCH3. Polypropylene.
And there's one more in your homework, same idea. It says polyvinyl acetate, PVA, polyvinyl acetate, is a compound of adhesive like wood glue or school glue, Elmer's glue, for instance. And it has the following formula. Notice here in this parenthesis, in this parenthesis, they're showing us the repeating pattern that came from the monomer. This is not the monomer because there's no double bond there, but it came from the monomer. And this just means this is the pattern that's repeated. What must the original polymer come from? Let's draw that original monomer. A monomer contains a double bond. It must for an addition reaction. It's mandatory. So this particular carbon I'll call carbon 1 and I'll call carbon 2. Carbon 2, it just has a, a unique functional group hanging off of it we've not yet seen, but we've seen an example such as polyvinyl chloride, polypropylene, or even ethylene. It's no different than saying this fourth group hanging off of carbon 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, this group could be Cl, it could be CH3, it could be H, or it could be this ester linkage here creating something known as PVA, polyvinyl acetate. So what was the original monomer? The original monomer must contain a double bond. So inside here there must have been a double bond. There must have been a hydrogen on carbon 1 and another hydrogen on carbon 1. Those are still the same. Carbon 2 also contained a hydrogen, that's right here, and it contained a carbon to oxygen to carbon double bond oxygen to a methyl group, CH3. So all I've done is taken the linkages and put them back between the carbons to create the double bond. I'm going to draw that in just a different color to repeat it. All I've done to go from the polymer back to the monomer was take the linkages and put them back between the two carbons and create the double bond. Everything else remained the same. And this is the structure that we just drew. Carbon number one with two hydrogens. Carbon number two with the hydrogen and the original functional group in position four. High density polyethylene, called HDPE, high density polyethylene, is an important grade of polyethylene. In the space below, draw a three repeating portion of the polymer of high density polyethylene. Another practice to remind us that we need to know the monomer, and those are in our text, monomers. The monomer that builds polyethylene and it's the same for either high density or low density. It's the same monomer. We just see that they attach in a different way uh, as they create their, um, their chains. All four constituents on the C double bond C are hydrogens. Now high density polyethylene and low density polyethylene have the same monomer. So it's the polyethylene. This molecule we named ethylene. We want to put three in a row. Carbon one, carbon two, all have hydrogens. Carbon three, carbon four, or we could repeat carbon one, carbon two. We're going to have three structures long, and every one of these is going to have hydrogens to complete the octet. I'm going to leave the ends without their uh, electron radical. I know they're there, but I'm not going to draw them. So every one of the linkages are exactly the same in polyethylene. They are all hydrogens. And I'll just fill those H's in and have my structure complete. High density and low density polyethylene come from the monomer polyethylene, which all is the same hydrogen all through the branch. I think we've done plenty of repetition and you're getting very good at these. Let's pause our first lesson here 
and we're going to come back in lesson number two and talk about intramolecular forces that give qualities such as stretchability or rigidity in the molecular structure of plastics. Come back when ready to continue.